Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Life on the Wrist. Hope you guys are doing well today. We are talking export results for uh, Swiss watches. We have the series where we go through the um, Swiss watch export numbers each month. Uh, this month, this this episode, we're gonna be going over November's results. Um, they were fairly, uh, they were optimistic, um, but still showed the the effects of the, the, the last year that the, the, that the um, slowdown in global economies has had. Um, so if you are new to this series, I'm gonna go over October's results and then I will tell you what I predicted and look at um, November results. Um, so for October, um, the October results were, um, <laughs> October was actually one of the best months in the last nine months um, when it came to Swiss watch exports. Exports were down 7%. The 12 month moving average was um, just about uh, about 21%, um, so down <laughs> negative 21%. So fairly, fairly negative results, but it kind of is uh, the story of this year. The, um, the, the COVID-19 pandemic really was a, um, was a driver in slowing down global economies and uh, consumer spending. And so watches were obviously part of that across the board, both in metals as well as in price categories. We saw a slowdown um, in, in units and value, and it didn't really matter what, what material there was in October, they were all down. What was kind of um, nice to see is that there were more um, there were more countries that had a positive variance between 2019 and 2020 results. So just some examples, China, uh, Hong Kong, the UAE, Russia, uh, Kuwait, Canada, Turkey, all of those um, those nations saw an increase in um, in in exports to those uh, countries for Swiss watches, which um, I think was a, a positive sign. And if you look at a fairly large market being the United States, they were only down about negative 5%. So a fairly, a fairly, you know, a decent result, if I'm completely honest. Um, and so um, kind of my predictions were that, um, you know, the, the decline would continue. We were at negative 7%. I said it'll probably decrease by about negative 5%, especially kind of going into the holiday months where people are going to be buying uh, perhaps luxury products to gift to individuals in their family or friends. And so I thought uh, it would still be a decrease, but um, it would slowly start to start to get closer to that zero mark. And so for, for the month of November, there really was an equilibrium that watch exports uh, kind of got to. If you look at um, the overall uh, export numbers, um, export numbers were just shy of 2 billion Swiss francs, or yeah, 2 billion Swiss francs, it was 1.936 billion Swiss francs, which was over, compared to 2019 of November 2019, it was a change of negative 3%. So I think this is a real, um, a real, positive result for, um, for, for Swiss watch exports. You know, obviously November, December is kind of where holidays start to come about. And so people are looking for gifts that they can give to uh, individuals and their family. And I think this kind of shows that resilience. Um, interestingly enough, if you look at the last 11 months, uh, Swiss watch ex exports fell by 23 and a half percent over the last 11 months. For our December results, which we'll do next month, I'll kind of go over um, a year's result uh, so that you guys can kind of get those. But um, I thought that was an interesting uh, figure that um, that the Federation of um, the Federation of Horology kind of released. Moving on to the 12-month moving average, we really did see that plateau um, come about. If you looked at you know some of our previous videos, we mentioned this plateau. I want to say back in like um, in June, we saw kind of the the curve downwards in this 12 month moving average really kind of level out and so we are right around that you know negative um negative 21 percent um so um that's that's really the the driving force of that 12 month moving average i'm hoping that you know december is obviously another month where people are buying uh watches for or luxury goods for for you know friends and family so hopefully we'll see maybe a, a tick upwards in that 12 month moving average i'm i'm sort of optimistic i think we're probably going to get um you know it's going to be into 2021 before we really see a, a, a real recovery if we look at watches by price or by uh, material i was really excited about this because um, if you look at um, all the, the materials you obviously have the declines in a lot of the big ones 
um, namely other materials had a change by negative 41%. What was really great is that gold and steel watches actually increased by 20%. I thought this was fairly, um, a fairly interesting, um, a fairly interesting trend for the month of November. Um, and so, um, you know, if you, if you look at, uh, steel watches, they remain pretty steady. Um, you know, it's, it's still, uh, if you look at, sorry, that was the, uh, units, uh, gold and steel saw an increase of 20%. If you actually look at the export uh, values, you can actually see that steel was kind of unchanged, about negative 1%, which is, I think, negligible when you're really talking in grand scheme of things. And then gold and steel saw an increase in 5%. So the numbers, or the Swiss francs that they're actually exporting are remaining relatively steady. Um, if you look at units, they don't look as great, but I thought the the million, the, the, the uh, value was an interesting um, kind of marker there. Moving on to uh, watches by price category, um, this obviously uh, kind of resembled what we've been seeing over the last 11 months, but also you saw some positive signs as well. So if you look at uh, watches basically underneath 500 Swiss francs, they were still declined. There were still declines in both of those price categories, um, both in units and in value. Um, I think this is a fairly um, obvious one. People are probably going to be buying more expensive, expensive watches. And so, um, you know, 200 Swiss, uh, you know, 100 Swiss, 100 Swiss franc watches are not really going to be moving very, very quickly, I would say. Um, but if you look at everything above 500 Swiss francs, you know, 500 to 3000 Swiss francs basically was unchanged in both units and value compared to a year ago, where I think the markets were actually doing fairly well, watch markets. Um, and then if you look at over 3000 Swiss francs, you actually saw more units um, than more units uh, exported compared to last year. And uh, value was just slightly, slightly down by about negative 3%. So it was, it was interesting to see that people are buying more expensive watches. I think that just has to do with, um, with consumer, consumer habits. You know, they want to buy watches that are, you know, more expensive, even though you can find, um, really quality watches at under uh, 500 Swiss francs, but that's a completely separate um, discussion we can go into some other time. Uh, looking at, uh, if you look at it from a total perspective, when it comes to price categories, you can see fairly uh, poor results kind of driven by that under uh, 200 Swiss franc price category. Um, units fell by negative 16%, but value only fell by 3%. So um, those more expensive watches really were um, trying to push the envelope a little bit higher. Moving on to the main markets, um, this really was um, this uh, same story for, for this entire year. You know, uh, the Asian markets really led the way. If you look at the top uh, six markets, they comp they they made up fifty six percent of the total share of exports in the month of November. And on top of that list was China. China actually saw an increase of. Um, basically 70%, a rise in 70% year over year, which is a, an incredible feat. You know, there was no <laughs> COVID-19 in November, at least not not widespread. Um, and so, uh, you know, up to be up uh, 70% and basically um, in that China's share of the of the watch, uh, watch export uh, market for November was almost 16%, which is a fairly incredible feat. Um, second was actually the US and the USA was uh, saw a change of negative 2.8%, which I thought was actually fairly, fairly positive. Um, the US obviously has uh, an exorbitant amount of the uh, coronavirus um, cases as well as deaths. And so the fact that they were only down by about 3%, um, I think shows, um, well, you could look at this in two ways. It shows that um, perhaps things are kind of coming into their own and coming back, but also it probably, probably tells you that really the US isn't, isn't a huge share of uh, watch exports if you compare them to November. Um, following the US was Hong Kong, negative 14%, Japan up 2%, the United Kingdom up 22%, and then Germany, which was down um, negative 1%. If you look at the top six markets compared to this time last year, they were actually all up by about 11%, which I thought was a fairly, um, fairly good thing to, to see. Um, again, you saw um, some some positive results come out from come from more um, countries. If you look at you know the top 30, um, Taiwan, Russia, uh, Canada continue to, to be positive. Thailand, India, Turkey, Ireland with a beautiful 109% increase, Belgium, and then Oman with 155% increase. So again, a, a fairly um, a fairly large um, 
uh, some positive results coming out, I think, of, of November. If you look at the total share for the 30 markets, you can actually see that the variation between 2019 and 2020 was only down negative 3%. So again, I think these are signs that things are slowly coming back, slowly but surely. Moving on just to that, the one that I've really enjoyed kind of looking at, which is the total value variations for um, regions. If you look at Asia, it was only down negative, uh, negative half, you know, half a half a percentage it was down. So really not not too bad. The others were, were fairly high, you know, Oceania negative 5%, America negative eight, Europe negative 16, Africa negative 34. So still a fairly, a fairly um, large uh, decrease. But if you really think about it, you know, Asia right now, uh, at least in November, they encompass about 53% of the entire watch market, uh, Swiss watch exports, 53%, and they're only down by half a, by half a percent. So um, I think this is, these are good signs for the for Swiss watch exports, and I think things are slowly getting back to normal. And hopefully this vaccine will help that kind of continue. I think the, the, the interesting part about this is Europe, which encompasses about 30% of watch exports, um, they're still down about negative 16%. So I think there's still a long way to go when it comes to, um, you know, the full recovery of, of these markets. And, you know, what's going to be interesting is, do we actually think that there's still going to be um, such a high demand for, for, for watches coming out of this? Markets really change. Markets change every single day. And I think that these types of events make people um, continue to, you know, um, continue to change change habits. And so... Um, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. My predictions for December are very, very similar to the month of November. I think that Swiss, Swiss watch exports will um, see uh, a boost in, in um, exports from the holidays that, that kind of surround this time. I think December's obviously got Christmas and many other holidays. Um, and so watches are an, an, e an easy gift and, and a really nice gift to give someone. I'd be appreciative if someone gave me a watch for Christmas or New Year's. Um, so I think watch exports will continue to see some sort of recovery compared to this time last year. Um, I saw an article in the Wall Street Journal which said, you know, consumer spending um, increased uh, year over year, but very, very slightly. And so I think when it comes to Swiss watch exports, we predicted negative 5%. I'm predicting probably about um, negative 2% um, watch exports for the month of December. I think there's still going to be place um, for recovery to happen. And I think the plateau is going to continue in that 12 month moving average. However, I don't think it's going to be a full scale recovery because people have lost their jobs there. They don't have expendable income. And I think that's going to be part of the story when it comes to Swiss watch exports for this month. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, coverage of the November 2020 Swiss watch export results. If you haven't seen some of the other months that we've covered, there is a playlist on our channel. You can check those out. I'm sure there is something in, in, our, in the side panel that you can also check out if you want to get the, the scoop on those. Like I said, next month when I cover the December 2020 watch exports, um, I'm going to kind of do a year in review where I kind of um, start off with a, a view of what the entire year looked like compared to 2019, obviously. You can probably guess some of the things, but I hope that I can bring some interesting information to the video. So um, be sure to check out our December video when it comes out. Um, and um, and like I said, um, check out our playlist if you want to see uh, some of the other ones that we've we've covered. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you like these types of videos, we cover basically anything when it comes to watches. So be sure to check that out. Also, if you haven't done it already, be sure to smash that like button for us. It really does help us out with the YouTube algorithm. And with this said, guys, thank you so much for watching and until next time.